to the new leader of the Democrats, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, now continuing her far-left crusade against anything, everything President Trump, but there's one itsy-bitsy problem. Reality just keeps getting in the way. Now, she was recently asked about her top three reasons to impeach the president. She had a little trouble answering the question. Kind of becoming common. Take a look. You could reach in a bag and pull so many things out that are impeachable of this president. I support impeaching this president. Two and three? Two and three. Um, I think two would be uh, tax fraud. Mm -hmm. And number three, um, man. I mean, there's just there's just so much. <laughs> okay. Let me ask like you. Like the census, the, there's, right. you know, I I can't even the the tax bill. It's like what can like there's just so much. It's just just so many things that I can't find one. I'm but I'm working on it. All right. Also ramping up her radicalism on foreign policy and taking aim at one of our most important allies. Take a look at this. I think what we're really seeing is the ascent of authoritarianism across the world. I think that Netanyahu is a Trump-like figure. Would you be in favor of reducing military or economic aid to Israel? I mean, I think it's on the table. I think it's not certainly on the table, and I think it's something that, that can be discussed. Now, while the Democratic primary is just beginning, Ocasio-Cortez is already making one thing clear. He doesn't want Joe Biden to be the nominee. Oh, boy. I guess she decides, not Nancy Pelosi. Take a look. This idea that we can go back to the good old days with Obama, with Obama's vice president, and I think you know there's there's a there's an emotional element to that. But I I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. Here with reaction, founder of Skybridge Capital, Anthony Scaramucci, Fox News contributor Rachel Campos Duffy is with us. Sorry, Mooch. Oh, good to see you, man. Hey, great to be here, Sean. Um, yeah. All right, so. There's so many things. But uh, where do you want to start? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll start there. <laughs> well, I would say AOC out of New York ASAP. That would be my first thing to say. But yeah. secondarily, I think Nancy Pelosi, whose daughter said that she could cut somebody's throat without them even feeling it, is going to take her out. I, th I don't think there's any well, chance. Well, she says there's only five of these extremists in her yeah, yeah, party, but that she's part. scared to death of the five. You think so, though? I don't know about that. I think, I think there's a hundred supporting the new Green Deal. She's a remarkably successful survivor in Washington, and she's old school, and this sort of behavior I don't think is going to last very long. It's just my honest opinion. They'll find somebody to challenge her in that district. Uh, Crowley will probably would not come back, but somebody more moderate I think will take her lights out. I don't know. Also, she destroyed herself with this whole Amazon thing. So she's colorful. She's got some uh, interesting ways to attract attention to herself. But I think I think New York's getting tired of her pretty quickly. Well, we'll see. Uh, what did you make of Pelosi's comment in a little fluffball interview, Rachel, on 60 Minutes? Um, well, there's only five. But when it comes to Congresswoman Omar and Tlaib and Ocasio-Cortez, Nancy Pelosi doesn't seem to have or shown any ability to stand up to them. But Nancy Pelosi isn't with the Democrat Party. The heart of the Democrat Party is with Representative Omar, Elon Omar, and with Alexandria Cortez. And by the way, the socialist Bernie Sanders is the number one presidential candidate right now. I mean, he's got all the energy. The party, the Democrat Party is a socialist party. So when Ocasio-Cortez says, we don't want to go backwards, yeah, she means we don't want an old white man Biden, but she also means we want to embrace socialism wholly, completely. And and what the economically ignorant uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez doesn't understand, even though she has a degree in economics from Boston U, shame on you, Boston U, is that socialism is going backward. Those ideas are, are old. Those ideas have never worked. And it's a danger for the country, the kind of popularity and mainstreaming that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders have yeah. right now, whether Nancy wants to admit it or not. Anthony, besides crazy, creepy Uncle Joe Biden, which you'll have to deal with, the hardest thing he's going to have to deal with is, oh, you're going to bring back the, the same policies on giving mullahs $150 billion so they can buy uh, and foment terror and fight proxy wars? Remember, he's got the Ukraine issue as well. He's got to address That's that. That's a so, huge issue. You know, I, I, told, I told your friend Jesse that he's male, he's pale, and he's stale. <laughs> okay, unlike you, you happen to be 
male and pale, but you're very not stale, Sean. So, uh, so, so, so you have to understand, I think the guys... I think the it's guys great to have you back. We've so, missed I mean, you in a while. Well, you know, um, I mean, you know. All right, but here's the thing. You, look, economics is your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. New Green Deal, okay, we're going to get rid of oil and gas, the lifeblood of our economy. Mm -hmm. Cow flatulence. the combustion engine. Yep. Then everything's going to be free. Everything. Right. Whether you're willing or unwilling to work. Then the cars. Yeah. That after that, airplanes... I don't know how we're going to well, get to we it. We forgot the cows, but I think this is and, like a fabulous thing because like... I like steak. You own a restaurant. Well, I, I have a hunt and, 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 and fish club. I, I should have known. You have everything. I got to tell you, I mean, you know, I just love all this stuff because it's like great for the president. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, people look at that um, and they'll say, okay, maybe you're not going to tell my friend in L.A. that I'm voting for him. But then when they close the, the booth, he has the reverse Bradley effect. People say they're not going to vote for the president. They close the curtain you can, and they vote for the president. You cannot so, poll Donald Trump accurately. No, no, that's what I'm saying. So I think he wins by 60 percent. If they keep it up, uh, it's a step function about the amount of um, percentage that he'll win by. Uh, quick last response. I, I missed you, Sean. Uh, keep, keep shining a light on the hypocrisy of these socialists with very rich tastes. She lives in, a, in an apartment with an infinity pool on the penthouse. Uh, Bernie Sanders loves to fly private jets, so they talk a good game. But he even said today on the town hall that he um, is not interested in paying the tax rate um, that he proposes right now. So um, they, they're hypocrites. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't do as I do, do as I say. You know, great. And I'm a millionaire, but I liberals are only generous with other people's money. So that's the number one rule. What's going on? To unravel these mysteries, we're joined by lawyer and former Bill and Hillary Clinton advisor Richard Gussie. Richard, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. So when Cory Booker says, and this is sincerely confusing to me, dumping illegal aliens into our cities will make them <coughs> less safe, how can that be true when we know from him and you and everybody else on the left that they actually make us safer? So actually, it's the libertarian group, the Cato uh, in center that basically did the research that said that yeah. undocumented immigrants um, commit crimes at a much lower rate than native-born Americans. So you could laugh, but take it up with them, not me or liberals. They're no, the no, ones no, who no, put I'm not that out I've there. actually taken it up with them like 20 times, but I, I'm just interested in Booker like, and Cher. I'm not attacking anybody, but if they are less likely to commit crimes and are really the core of our economy, and if they're the most American among us, then why in the world would you be calling them garbage who make our cities more dangerous, as yeah. Senator Booker just did? Yeah, he's not calling them garbage. Look, I, I, I think that... Well, dumping them. The, the president's signature campaign promise was to have Mexico pay for that wall, which would have kept all this from even being an issue. He failed on that. It's counterproductive. Remember, he mocked people saying, oh, I want a trip to Disneyland. So what's he doing? He's giving them an all-expensive paid trip to a great city. They would never even dream of getting there. But Wait, wait, wait. But, 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 wait, but hold on. Hold on. For, for 40 years, we've taken refugees and moved them into rural and poor America. Why wouldn't we move them into Pacific Heights? in San Francisco, and why don't we move it? No, I'm, I'm sincere. Instead Fine. of every time they come, they go to the Mahoning Valley, or they go to Bethlehem, PA, or they go to Lewiston, Maine. Why don't we send them into our zip code and into Nantucket? I'm not joking. Because I think what President um, Trump is talking about is sending thousands of people with no job, no family connections, no resources, and then having them go into a community where they have no roots, no nothing. So, of course, That's if you what send, we do if you now send ten, with millions of people, if, every, if you, every decade you have a totally different country, basically. If you send 10,000. No one cares. Yeah, if you send 10,000 or 100,000 people from Norway or North Dakota to Pacific Heights, it would be alarming, too, having nothing to do with the color of their skin or whatnot. So I think what Cory Booker says is almost Wait, you're undeniable. you're making my argument. Wait, hold on. Wait a second. You're making my argument, and God bless you for doing it. I, I believe what you just said, and I agree with it. It's not about race. It's about the pace of change. People can't handle it, and why should they have to handle it? I agree with that. And people called me a white nationalist for saying that, but you said the same thing, and you're right. But well, I'm just asking, why don't we have the same concern about the rest of the country that is getting this imposed on them and nobody cares why don't yeah. we care he, the, the problem tucker is the president tried this in the 2018 campaign about caravans that didn't work at gillespie as you remember famously tried it about ms-13 in the run-up to his election day and he went from being tied to losing by nine 
This is this is a tactic. The president will tr has tried it the day he came down that escalator. He's going to try it on election day in 2020 and every day yeah. in between. And it's, un oh, it's, it's it unproductive. I mean, it, it, okay, politically, it's maybe unproductive. Maybe it does one thing. But hold and, on. Wait, can and you it incentivizes it people to thing. come. That's the other okay. problem. You're right, of course. But maybe it, it makes us more compassionate toward the rest of the country who don't live in the zip codes that we do, coastal, affluent zip codes. And when they complain about immigration, maybe they're not bigots. Maybe they just want some control over what happens to their town. Yes. Do you see and what the, I'm saying? And, and I think comprehensive immigration reform is essential. That's what the president's okay. trying to accomplish. No, they, go back to the right. 2013 deal that had Rubio, Lindsey Graham, and right. other pinkos supporting it. Right. That's no, the basis this, for a bill. This is, this is the... Right. This is not that. It, it's there. It, it, Pelosi and Schumer offered him a deal. You're coming, you're, you're coming closer to, to the answer, though, and I, I appreciate it. You Thank got you. it.